In the old days, ships were able to be moved over the water by wind through the use of sails. In today's world, where ships are basically massive chunks of steel, they are now propelled by engines. In previous episodes, I have given you a glimpse of what a ship's engine room looks like. In this video, it's time to dive a little bit deeper and learn a few more details about the most common types of machinery found in a typical cargo ship's engine room. As stated earlier, modern cargo ships are driven by engines. But before we continue, let me first state that the most common engine type used by cargo ships nowadays is the diesel engine. Yes, there are ships which use other types of engines like steam turbines, but a great majority of the world's cargo ships use diesel engines. That being said, this video will focus on the machinery used in a typical cargo ship with a diesel engine setup. So first and foremost on the list, and the biggest piece of machinery inside the engine room is of course, the main engine. The main engine's purpose is to provide propulsion power. This is achieved by rotating the propeller, which is coupled to the engine's flywheel by means of the propeller shaft. This means that when the engine runs and makes the flywheel rotate, the propeller rotates as well and generates thrust. Now, in order for the main engine to run, it needs fuel. And even though it is called a diesel engine, it doesn't mean that it uses diesel fuel all the time. As I have shown in a previous video, it uses heavy fuel oil, or as I like to call it, the black stuff. Now, this heavy fuel oil comes with a lot of impurities like sludge, water, and abrasive particles which will damage the engine. So before using it, it needs to be purified. And this is done by using oil purifiers. An oil purifier is basically a big centrifuge. Its function is to separate heavier particles from oil by means of centrifugal force. There's also a separate set of purifiers, which is used for the main engine's lubricating oil. Of course, Heavy fuel oil is very viscous, so it needs to be heated in order to lower the viscosity. It will need to pass through the fuel oil heaters and increase the temperature to around 130 to 135 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the viscosity is low enough for the fuel to be atomized by the injectors. Now, heaters utilize steam in order to function and steam is produced by the boiler. A boiler's function is to generate pressurized steam. When the main engine is not running, it does the job by burning fuel in order to evaporate water. But when the main engine is running, the exhaust gas from the engine passes through the boiler system's economizer tubes and utilizes the waste heat from the exhaust gas to boil the water instead. Now, to kickstart the main engine, we will need compressed air. This function is accomplished by the air compressors. The compressed air is then stored inside the air tanks and usually kept at a pressure between 22 to 30 bar. Compressed air is also used for different purposes like in pneumatic systems and general service. When the engine is running, its components will start to heat up. To prevent this, we will need to circulate cooling water to maintain the temperature and prevent overheating. This is accomplished by using coolers. Coolers and heaters are what you call heat exchangers. 
The difference is that their purposes are opposite to each other. In any case, the process involves the flow of fluids, one hot and one cold, through the heat exchangers in order for a heat transfer to occur. Now, making liquids flow is done by using pumps. Inside a ship's engine room, there are many different types of pumps serving many different purposes. There are pumps for fuel, lube oil, hydraulics, seawater, and fresh water. Nearly all main auxiliary and ancillary systems need pumps to circulate or move liquids through their components. Now, since we mentioned cooling water, we know that seawater is abundant and can be readily used for some purposes, but not all. For certain systems, like in the main engine jacket cooling and in the boiler, the medium to be used is fresh water, that is, water with very low salinity. For that, we have the fresh water generator. Most ships are installed with the distillation plant, but there are a few which have the reverse osmosis system. Whatever the design, its purpose is to convert seawater into fresh water. For a detailed explanation on how distillation plants work, just click here or in the link down in the description. Now, once the main engine is running, it will be necessary to steer the ship in the desired direction. This is done by means of the steering gear. There are different types and designs of steering gear, but the most common among them is the ram type. In any case, the steering gear is hydraulic driven and turns the ship's rudder to the desired position in order to direct the ship to a particular heading. Now, what I've shown you so far are the essential systems, meaning they are the machinery that are needed for the ship to run safely. But there are also what is called non-essential systems, which basically provide other functions that are also important, but are otherwise not needed to make the ship move. First and foremost is the oily water separator. This is one of the top requirements of MARPOL. In an operational engine room, it is unavoidable to accumulate bilge water either through moisture, drains, or washing residue. And at some point, this bilge water will need to be discharged. However, any bilge water in the engine room is presumed to be contaminated with oil, and the MARPOL convention prohibits the direct discharge of oil or oily water into the sea. Bilge water will need to pass through the oily water separator to be filtered, and once the oil content is below 15 ppm, the water will be discharged into the sea. If the oil content is 15 ppm and above, the bilge water will automatically be returned to the bilge tank. Remember when I was talking about the purifier, I mentioned it separates sludge and other impurities from the heavy fuel oil and the lubricating oil? Those residues are collected and stored in the sludge and waste oil tanks. Eventually, they will accumulate, and they will be disposed either in reception facilities, when the ship is in port, or by using the ship's incinerator. The incinerator serves the purpose of burning waste oil and solid garbage, except for plastics. It is also a marble item, so it is very important to keep it functional at all times. Since the ship also serves as the housing facility for the crew, naturally, there will be bathrooms and toilets. Now, some of you may have wondered, where does the poop go? No, it doesn't get flushed directly to the sea. The black water will need to pass through the sewage treatment plant. The most common type used on board ships is the biological type, which makes use of aerobic bacteria to decompose and break down the sewage. And of course, we have the refrigeration and air conditioning systems. The refrigeration system is for food storage. The ref chamber usually has two rooms for frozen and another one for fruits and vegetables. 
the air conditioning system for the accommodation is centralized and to be more precise is actually an HVAC or heating, ventilation and air conditioning system. This allows flexible control since ships sometimes pass through areas with different climates within a relatively short time. All of the machinery that I've shown you so far have their own electrical components and as such they will need electricity. This of course is provided by the generators. Generators are driven by diesel engines and these engines are of course smaller than the main engine and their sole purpose is to generate electricity for the entire ship. If you ask me, and this is my personal opinion, the generators are the most important among all the machinery on board a ship. Because without electricity, the subsystems won't be able to run, which means the main engine won't be able to start. Sure, we do have the emergency generator, but its actual purpose is to start up the emergency systems that are needed to start up the generators. So, there you have it. These are the usual machinery that can be found in a typical ship's engine room. Like I said, it's for a diesel installation, and of course, for special ship types like tankers, there are additional machinery that are used for cargo operations, which can also be found in or around the ship's engine room. Take note that what I have shown you was just an overview. We'll dive deeper and tackle the more intricate details for each equipment in future episodes. I hope you liked this video, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave it at the comment section. I'll try to answer as many as I can, or maybe some of our other viewers will be able to answer for you. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the next one.